the papers now see what the headlines are this morning. We have Dr. Danny Kerry from the University of Lagos in here. Uh, we also have our in-house analyst, Obani Akinwale. Gentlemen, good morning. Good, good morning. morning. Nice to see you both. Same Thanks for it. Let's begin with the News Direct this morning. News Direct is where we start from. Politi uh, police tactical forces killed 250 Ansaru terrorists, bandits in Kaduna. Okay, that's what you see on the front page of the News Direct. Blueprint is where we go next. And it says, declare emergency on security. SCIA tells federal government, that is Supreme Council for Islamic Affairs. Now, Bajabia Mila to service chiefs, uh, people's, uh, people's being killed every day. Uh, people are being killed every day, rather. Elite <coughs> should speak up. Oshibajo, the vice president, is saying this. An IGP Senate broker choose on Amoteko and others. Okay, that's uh, the blueprint. The Daily Times is next and is focusing on insecurity. Bajabia Mila urges or charges service chiefs to redouble efforts, says Nigerians are anxious over a prevailing state of insecurity. That's uh, the Speaker of the House of Representatives. Okay, the, last, the next one now is uh, Daily Trust. Daily Trust says uh, tough issues as Buhari meets economic team today. Okay, and from there we go to the Nation newspaper. And uh, Chopper shot, 250 killed in police bandits forest battle. And pilots injured and fighter jets hit uh, ISWAP members. Okay. All right, now gentlemen, the issues of security is coming back on the front burner again. I remember we had we many, many months, many weeks. In fact, for the past several years, we've been talking about security. People talk about the issue of uh, the need to declare state of emergency. What the government is doing now, I wonder if it's different from uh, declaring state of emergency, but the, the Supreme Council for Islamic Affairs <coughs> has uh, spoken the minds of Nigerians by telling the president to declare uh, emergency in security. Uh, Dr. Kerry, let me start with you on this. I wonder if this message is new or if it is to, you know, just to add to what is on ground. Well, it, it depends on uh, the quarters I'll be viewing it. It might be new to the president. You never can tell. Okay. You know, because, uh, you know, w w when, you, when you are in a very secure place, sometimes you don't really understand what is happening to others. And, 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 I, and I, I would have, you know, perhaps we should allow some of the, you know, political office holders to move without security so that they appreciate what we are going through. You know, everywhere in this country, it, it has never been this bad. That has never been this bad. And I'm thinking that uh, it seems as if some of them are not even really aware. Either that they don't read the papers or that perhaps those who they have appointed to go through the papers and give their reports are not giving them the actual reports. Otherwise, from every corner you hear that insecurity, insecurity, killing upon killing, you know, banditry, Boko Haram is on his part, you know, kidnappers on all part, arm robber, name it. So, to say declare a state of emergency, if by now the federal government does not understand that there is a need for that, at least the, the uh, you know, the Amoteku issue should be enough signal to tell the government that security is a major challenge in Nigeria. Because if, if, if we were, you know, fully secured or well secured, I have my doubts if the states would want to, you know, spend more resources on the same issue that is already taken care of. But clearly, because there is a serious security gap, serious challenge in the security mm -hmm. of lifestyle properties, you can see that practically all the zones, all the political zones are already, you know, working out, you know, modalities for establishment of projects of that kind. I, I, I remember the other day I, I, I watched, uh, you know, was it the, I think, one of the northern zones mm -hmm. saying the same thing. You know, they've, so, they've launched so uh, Shege Kafasa now. Beautiful, in, the name uh, they call it is what I don't really get. Uh, but the point is that... Uh, because you don't speak Hausa. Beautiful. Uh -huh. But they've just <laughs> told you that. That is a signal telling the government that you are not doing enough. And as a matter of fact, I don't expect how about 400,000 uh, policemen, out of which over 250 will be security private homes, will be able to, I mean, uh, political office holders and uh, maybe banks and the rest, will be able to actually fully cater for the security of life and property right. in Nigeria. Let, let me bring in Obani uh, here. The point there is, some analysts have said that this is a signal that the government should take the driver's seat and do something about state policing and community policing now 
than because when you begin to see these things coming from different regions, it's just a, a signal to let you know that Nigeria is ripe for state police. What do you think? Uh, let me start by saying that, uh, make a reference to President Buhari's uh, three cardinal points of his campaign, which is basically on security, economics, and I think the last one was corruption. Uh, is Nigeria more safer than when Brazil Buhari took over power? In terms of Boko Haram encroachment to major cities, uh, the way they were going rampage even to Abuja, Yaya, what have you, Kaduna bombing, Benue, and what have you, you would say substantially yes. But is household safer mm -hmm. as compared to what we used to be? Absolutely no. So if you want to read this government in terms of its promises, which is security, corruption, and uh, economy, they have failed woefully. And when you have an economy that is getting stiffer and tighter every day, you are bound to have an insecure state because everybody will start to scamper for whatever is available to eat. You just mentioned now, coalition of northern groups have started uh, Shege, Kafasa, mm -hmm. I dare you or something. And you find out that if individual groups, not government agencies, now started having uh, security forces, we are, going, we are gradually getting to a lawless state. Because what it means is that I can call my town development association and say, we are forming our security union. Mm -hmm. And that is it. So in terms of government, if anybody is calling government now, it's a shame. But you will not be surprised where we are. If our president come out a few weeks ago, that is surprised. I saw a cartoon from uh, this funny man, the interview, and he saw a lot of scores with blood. And President Buhari was, in, he was the, cartoon, the cartoonist was putting that, I am surprised mm. to see the level of blood. So if the president is surprised, I, I, I doubt why we still continue to flog issues that there is insecurity because it shows our president is not aware. And if the commander in chief of armed forces is not aware the country is insecure, we are just wasting our time. And if National Assembly, that are by law supposed to check the to serve as check and balance for the government, are shouting to the the military chiefs that the people are not secure. If the vice president is now saying people should speak up, there is something that is wrong. By constitution, if a president cannot secure a country, he's not supposed to be a president. At the time they were asking for the state of the nation address. Tell us what state are we? We here is safe in Nigeria. Where is, where is, where is the job? Where is the security? So first of all, it, it, it has to get to a moment whereby every Nigeria has to be coached because sincerely, yes, we have to be sincere with ourselves. This government does not care about life of Nigerians. That's the sincere truth. That's the, your opinion. Then. It, it is not my opinion. <laughs> and I will tell you because I'm sure when you are coming this morning, you wind up your two side mirrors. Mm. You can't take fresh air. Simply it's not because you don't want to take fresh air. It's simply because you are afraid of those Okada boys that they may attack you. But and they, they, they have been banned in Lagos They have been now, banned, so. but they have created a lot of insecurity <laughs> all around. So what it means is that nowhere is safe. If you go to Abuja airport early in the morning, people are not safe getting to the Abuja airport. If you will see military checkpoints, entering to an international airport, it shows a level of insecurity. When you start having military doing regular police job, there is, no, there is no way you go in this country that you don't see camouflage green and, green and white. What tells you that when the military are now doing the police job, the country is in state. It's not, nobody should call for emergency. We're already under emergency. Because if you are carrying the boys from the bush to come to the town, there is no fire on the mountain. Fire mm -hmm. is already burning our house. And right. it's high time the people in power sit and do this, and people don't get surprised. All they right. do uh, what they are employed do, do, to do. Dr. Kerry, yeah. now, now, now that we are having uh, Operation Amotekun, Shege Kafasa, if we go to the east, I guess the, uh, the southeastern governors will come up with their soon, <laughs> Obviously, and the south-south, and then the north-central, mm. because at least the governor of, uh, of Plateau State has said the north-central, they, they are considering they something are like us, that. Yeah. Now, uh, with all of these outfits, are we, are we likely to see the... Um, calmness when it comes to uh, presence of security? Well, you can't be too sure, but then, because uh, along the line, you might have clashes, okay. you know, uh, among these bodies. Okay. But what I'm beginning to imagine is that we may get to a situation whereby, you know, just like the, the, the Southwest states have a motorcone, mm. then you, Lagos will, will have his own. Already they have neighborhood watch and yes. what have you. Mm. Then it will get to a point that local governments will begin to find its own way of securing itself. Streets will begin <laughs> to organize themselves because Clearly, it, it, the government cannot do it. They have failed. Not that the they government cannot. cannot. They don't have the capacity to do it. In terms of 
resources in terms of uh, manpower and all the rest. They don't have it. I, I, even, I even doubt if they think it really is even working in that direction. Because from what we are seeing, I expected that by now, the, both the National Assembly and the, the executive will be working at you know, legislation that will actually create a solid base for, if community policy is about sending the police to, you know, maybe villages and there, they have always been there. But how many? Hmm. How effective? So it should be about creating a proper structure that will ensure that states take charge. And as a matter of fact, where this thing is driving to is that we truly need to operate what a federal system entails. Not this scenario in which, you know, states will be going to the center to look for funds and all of that. If we operate the proper, you know, federal structure, <coughs> which we, by nomenclature, we call ourselves, mm. we need to operate that. Or okay. to get that, we might continue to have this challenge. All right. Mm. So uh, we need to practicalize the, the federalism we preach. Stories making the headlines in Nigeria newspapers. I have with me in the studio Dr. Danny Kerry from the University of Lagos and in-house analyst Obani Akiwali. Good morning, gentlemen. Thank morning. you for joining us on TVC Breakfast. Thank you. We head straight to the papers now, and I begin with uh, the News Direct. Police uh, tactical forces killed 250 Ansari terrorists, bandits in Kaduna. To the front page of the blueprint, declare emergency on security. SCIA tells federal government, Bajabia Mila to service chiefs, please. Uh, People are being killed every day. Elites should speak up. Oshibajo, IGP, Senate, broker truce on Amotekun orders. And on the front page of the Daily Times, the insecurity that Abia Mila charges service chiefs to redouble efforts, says Nigerians are anxious over prevailing state of insecurity. And on the front page of the Daily Trust, uh, tough issues as uh, Buhari meets economic team today. We'll be looking at that story shortly. And finally, on the front page of the Nation newspaper, Chopper shot 250 killed in police bandits forest battle. Pilots injured. Fighter jets hit ISWAP members. All right, gentlemen, let's look at the story on the front page of uh, the Daily Trust this morning. The president will be meeting with uh, the Economic Advisory Council, the members uh, of uh, this committee. And according to what is uh, on the front page of this paper, tough decisions uh, have to be made looking at the state of uh, Nigeria, e Nigeria's economy. This is the first time they're having a formal meeting. What do you think would be at the front burner of this meeting? I'll start with you, Obani. Uh, let me say, will there be any tougher time than what Nigeria are going through at the moment? <laughs> uh, I'm not a guru in economics, but basic elementary in economics shows that when the price of goods and services keeps going higher and you are pumping uh, currency to circulation, directly or indirectly, you are encouraging devaluation and inflation. Mm. So if federal government has increased VAT or tax, consumption tax, uh, income tax to 7.5 percent and that means and you have also increased the the buying capacity in terms of minimum wage to 30,000 naira or 30,500 as the case not may all be. states have implemented yet so what we have eventually done is that mm. we are going to have more money in circulation and we are going to use more money to withdraw through the tax and what have you then again you also look at it from the angle that when you have that is it not better for us to find a way of enhancing the capacity of naira what it means is that if I'm buying a good at 360 naira, 360 uh, naira to a dollar, mm. and the part of 7.5 is already included, it's going to skyrocket the price of the good, and comparatively, naira will not be able to compete with other foreign currencies. Then you find out that you are impoverishing the lives of. Now, what the world government has done again is this that they want to bring non regular people into tax nets, mm -hmm. which means. People that are not even collecting the 30,000 naira minimum wage will be affected by so-called 7.5 percent. Absolutely. So at the end of the day, I don't know what tougher measures in, in Nigeria you provide your own electricity. Either you have solar panel or you have inverter or you have generator. You provide your own water because you have borrow in your house or you have a well or you buy from Merua. You provide a facility because when you get to hospitals, you are given the list of drugs to go and buy yourself. Government is increasing VAT by 5 percent. Income tax is increasing. Uh, you are, you are uh, the non-formal uh, non sector of the economy, you are clamping down on them every day. Then what tougher measures again are we looking at? 
The palm price remained the way it is. The same government, I remember uh, Professor that time, the word of blessed memory said, when Buari comes back, the fuel price will go back to what it used to be. Jonathan did 97, we all shouted. Buari is doing 145, no review. And you can be 100% sure. So are these that the issues you will want the uh, advisory council to address? president is not ever aware of anything. He's surprised that the economy is this way. So meeting them is just like creating a jamboree or grabbing headlines as usual. Because if these are put in place, I, I expected that the, co the policy will have looked at how do we strengthen the Naira? Not at how do, because what we are trying, really trying to do is that in the next two and a half years, Labor will ask for another increase. And you of can course. be sure now that government has played role in such a way that they can also review the tax rate. So we keep on reviewing the tax rate, keep on impoverishing poor Nigerians, then look at what uh, is uh, what let, is let, let, the, Let's bring Dr. Kerens uh, in, into this discussion now. Obviously, from what uh, uh, Obani Akiwale has said, it is a tough task uh, ahead of the Economic Advisory Council. But then what do you see them uh, trying to do now? Because a lot is expected of them from Nigerians. I keep wondering really what they do. <laughs> but that's the truth, yes. They are to but advise the president. <coughs> Whether the problem is with the advisor. <laughs> or the president. Or, or, the or he doesn't advice. need to advise. I, I, I really don't understand. You know, because sometimes you find, and that's the challenge we have with, you know, as, uh, economists. They will come and start telling us statistics. How there is this index, how there are indices here, how there are percentages. Meanwhile, nobody is feeling any part of these things we are talking about. The only thing that can tell anybody in Nigeria that the government is doing well, that the advisors have advised well and everything, is that at the end of the day, you have something to eat. And you could get home and there is electricity. You go to work, there is electricity and all of that. Then the rules are okay. I mean, if it, let government be functional. That's all we're interested in. So whatever advice they are going to, the only agenda I will set for them is that let government be functional. And by that we mean that let uh, facilities, you know, the various, you know, uh, social infrastructure, let them be available. Mm -hmm. So if the advice is about how to increase VAT again, I don't know. <laughs> because so far, maybe the president or those in government don't even know how much people are. And you are talking about government workers any 30,000 minimum. Mm -hmm. Go and find out what these teachers are earning in all these private schools. So many of them. Some graduates, 10,000, 15,000. You pay... A VAT from that, whatever you are going to buy, you know, yeah, then, of course. And then at the end of the day, how much is a room? I'm not talking of taking a flat now, just mm -hmm. a room, not self container, just an ordinary room. <laughs> yeah, I mean, what else are we looking at? You see, until uh, maybe the policy is that they want so many people dead so that the few that will be left could be managed. Of course, they wouldn't want that. But if not, security is already, you know, seriously challenged. People are not protected, people are not safe. Mm. People are dying and nobody's aware except those who are dying and their relations. You know, so we, we are really, I, I think the time has come really for the government to sit up and to see governance as a serious issue. And this should be an eye opener to so many people who, who usually, you know, at the end of the day, you know, flog the roads in the name of, oh, this is the one of integrity. Governance is so, beyond integrity. So they should look into ensuring that uh, governance, Nigerians feel the effect mm -hmm. of governance. That is the only way we will know that there is any policy that is meaningful. Mm. The only way is that we we'll feel it, we we'll see it at work, there is food to eat, right. and everything is working. Gentlemen, let's leave it here now. Nigerian News Direct. Nigerian News Direct says a poli a police tactical forces kill 250 Ansaro terrorists, bandits in Kaduna. Okay, from there, let's go to the blueprint. Blueprint says, declare emergency on security. The security Supreme Council for Islamic Affairs tells federal government, but Jabia Mila to service chiefs, uh, people are being killed every day. Elite should speak up. Shibaju is uh, reported as saying this. An IGP Senate broke a peace or truce on Amotekun, others. Right, from there, let's go to the Daily Times. Daily Times is focusing on insecurity. But Jabia Mila charges service chiefs to redouble efforts. Says Nigerians are anxious over prevailing state of insecurity. All right, from there, let's go to Daily Trust. That says tough times or tough issues as Buhari meets uh, economic team today. All right, uh, from there, let's go to the nation. The nation is uh, back to the issues of security. Chopper shot. 250 killed in police bandits forest battle.
and uh, pilots injured and uh, fighter jets hit ISWAP members. Okay, gentlemen, if we have to go back to the issue of uh, security, the, the Nation newspaper as well as uh, the News Direct uh, is taking this issue on uh, the fight against uh, bandits. Now, these are new dimensions where helicopters have been, have been shot at. Bandits were not necessarily known for that before. It was Boko Haram that was, uh, uh, you know, uh, said to be, you know, to have anti-aircraft, anti uh, whatever they have. But now we have bandits. Is there something emboldened them? And the, the security agencies have said that uh, they were on top of these issues. The police had, at one time or the other, reported that uh, they, they had reduced all of those to a, to a greatest minimum. The, the, some of the governors in the, in, the, in the Northwest had reported also of uh, amnesty given to some of these, and they were ready to help, uh, you know, to repent and uh, drop their weapons. Uh, Obani, I wonder what, what do you make of this? Uh, like you just mentioned, they are always on top because the aircraft will be on top. <laughs> so I assume by that, that's what they mean, they are on top. <laughs> but like I always, uh, if you look at antecedents mm -hmm. and some of the plans set by previous administration, you discover that subsequent mm -hmm. administration after Abangida has tactically weakened the Nigerian military. Uh, information has it that because of the fear of coup, mm -hmm. so they decide to try as much as possible to withdraw military might, military equipment in such a way that nobody will have the f or capacity mm -hmm. to stage a, a coup anywhere. So it was until this government comes on board, they started, Jonathan started it that they want to go and buy at South Africa that we have the money linked and what have you. So in fairness, this government is the one trying to re-equip our military. And you find out that a couple of days ago, the chief of Air Force was telling us the number of platforms they have revamped and they are going to put to operation. But the question we keep asking ourselves is that we have Operation Rattlesnake, Python Dance, mm. uh, crocodile, crocodile smile. smile. And you find out that each time Crocodile is smiling, the bandit is also smiling. Mm. So if the Crocodile smile is not working, let's try Crocodile Fran. <laughs> if, the, if the dancing of snake is making the boundaries to, to <laughs> you look at uh, Governor Rufai's uh, interview on BBC, mm. and it was almost ready to go that is beyond their capacity. So the question now is this, if a state mm. or a system has understand a failure, why don't we seek uh, where the air comes from? Mm. Then uh, the, the so-called bandits, we are the ones that we see them as ragtag people. I'm telling you they are sophisticated guys to buy a K-47 is not something that you buy off the shelf. Mm. To buy a bullet is something you buy off the shelf. And again, government needs to look into the military uh, financing all over the world. It's only military financing that you hardly audit. So for example, military is going on ISR to go and raid the Kaduna forest. Mm. You are going to use fuel. You are going to deploy personnel. Mm. How do you account for how that? Do you account when you for drop the number of bombs or what have you on the, on the target, mm. who tells how many you have done, how many people you have eliminated? So mm -hmm. some of these dynamics that, like I said, until your president is not surprised, you will see that a lot of things in this country will work. Mm. But as we continue to have a surprising president, we get, can't get surprising from the bandits, from Boko Haram. And now that is a red flag for all of us. If the bandit has the F-1 tree to shoot helicopter, mm. I wonder what next we should be expecting wow. from Boko Haram. All right. Now, uh, uh, Dr. Kerry, the, on the other hand, the people have talked about the issue of security votes. If it is true and evident and factual that governors at their level don't have the uh, control of the security agencies because it's a uni almost like a unitary system yeah. where all of them take their... their orders from Abuja, then how do we justify the, the quantum, uh, the amount of money that is meant for security votes at that level? Yeah, it, it becomes very challenging, really, because uh, you'll be wondering, what are you securing? Mm. You are not in charge of the police. But if, if it's this kind of arrangement of Amoteku, we can understand that, yes, there is something you want to put in your money. <laughs> but as, as far as the, the issue of, you know, Policing is concerned. It's, it's, in, it's, a, it's a central something. It's the federal government that is in charge. So for governors to now have, you know, security votes, except you are saying that, okay, we, 
the ones they use in supporting the police. But that one should be a clear vote, a, a, a clearly budgeted amount that people should be able to account for what has actually gone, mm. you know, to the police. And the or maybe it is good now that we have uh, the Amotekus Chirani. and, and yes. also the Shegi. Now so they, they, so, they, so they, that they now have there will be something to yeah, they, suck up the money. They have a place they can, in fact, this time around it's going to be worse because they are going to increase the budgetary allocation for security votes. Okay. And, <laughs> uh, yeah, 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 <laughs> and it's as opaque as anything. Nobody will know what it has gone into as far as those projects are there. You Absolute. hear, oh, we put this. In fact, you won't even ask because there's no room for accountability okay. as far as security issues are concerned. All right. But all Nigerians agree something has to change when it comes to tackling insecurity. Everything. No, everything yeah. has to change. Everything oh, okay. has to change. Because okay. oh, everything. Not, everything has to change. Terribly something from yes, top sorry. to bottom, bottom to top. Yes. Okay. <laughs> everything has to change. Okay. Thank you very much, uh, Dr. Dane Kere, for coming it's on the pleasure. program. It's a Thank you. Obani Akinwale, thank you. Pleasure being Thank you. Right, you're watching TVC Breakfast, and we are streaming live on YouTube. You can also connect with us on Twitter using the hashtag TVC Breakfast.